Estados Unidos, el corazón del imperialismo, vuelve a ser sacudido nuevamente por la violencia policial racista, que en complicidad con la justicia burguesa sigue cobrando sus víctimas en el movimiento obrero. Vamos a escuchar a nuestra compañera Rosemary de la voz de los trabajadores directamente desde Berkeley, California. We are in solidarity with the community of Ferguson and their struggle against the police brutality epidemic and of the racist justice system in the United States. In August of this year, the country was shaken up by the killing of unarmed teenager Michael Brown at the hands of officer Darren Wilson. This is another black victim added to the long and growing list of murdered black and brown people at the hands of the government police force. As we know, This has the support of not only the U.S. justice system, but also the government. This year, there have been at least 21 deaths of unarmed black, brown, and mentally ill people by police officers. Many of us still feel the injustice from the 2012 killing of Trayvon Martin by George Zimmerman, a neighborhood watch coordinator and aspiring police officer who was found not guilty. Prior to that, many came out in anger in protest in 2009 in the case of unarmed Oscar Grant killed on New Year's Day by officer Johannes Meserly, who served only 11 months. In the Latino community, huge protests were sparked after the killing of Carlos Mejia earlier this year. And 13-year-old Andy Lopez in 2013, whose death resembles the killing of 12-year-old Tamir Rice last month. Both children were playing with toy guns. Barely a week passed since the grand jury failed to indict Officer Wilson. Another no indictment was given to New York police officer who killed Eric Gardner in an illegal chokehold. Gardner repeatedly stated, I can't breathe, before passing out and was later pronounced dead. The killing of Mike Brown by police is not an isolated incident. It is part of a systematic violence perpetrated by the police against all poor and marginalized community. Racism intensifies the arbitrary violence of police as we see with Mike Brown, Eric Gardner, Andy Lopez, Oscar Grant, and the many, many others who have been taken through state-sanctioned murder. It is nearly impossible for the justice system to indict cops, much less convict them. But when it comes to imprisoning the working poor and oppressed communities, the United States is able to fill their prisons with our people. We have no confidence in the United States justice system. In Ferguson, Missouri, the killing of Michael Brown sparked a widespread struggle of the black community to stop police violence and police state oppression. In 2013, there were 10,000 more arrest warrants given out in Ferguson than there were actual people living there, which means the law and police are a yoke on the people. The protests temporarily displaced the power of the police and the local government. Governor Nixon responded by declaring martial law. Protests spread across the United States, in many places the largest since the Occupy movement almost three years ago. Youth have been very active in the demonstrations and on high schools and university campuses. We need radical changes in the police, in the justice system, and in the government. The police must be demilitarized and killer cops convicted. We need to change the laws of the justice system that allow cops to kill with impunity. Most importantly, for our struggle, we must call on the government and the Obama administration as the main ones responsible for the situation because the politicians, starting with President Obama, condemn the protests and only offer their sorry words while doing nothing to change the laws and legislations which do nothing to protect the people or curb the police brutality. We need a national reform of the police and the government has failed 
to deliver it. For us, anti-racist, revolutionary socialists, we see the fight against racism as part of the fight against capitalism and for the alternative socialism. Racism is a forced segregation of black people at the bottom of our society and a deeply rooted substructure of the United States capitalist exploitation. We need to change the material conditions of the most oppressed communities, those fighting racist economics, racist government policies, and violent police. 